Welcome to the Fasting Podcast, WOW! Wellness and Optimal Weight. I'm Julie Phillips, your host, certified natural health professional for two decades. In the weekly episodes, you'll discover simplified approaches, little-known facts, insights from the wellness coach perspective, valuable tips, and amazing wellness tools and technologies. And now, on to the show. This is episode 30, Build Your Fasting Muscle. Fasting is not easy for everyone, nor is exercise. Some people need to start slowly and build up gradually. So let's talk about some simple basics first. Clean, organic, all-natural eating and drinking, excellent hydration, good pure water, not plastic bottled water. Open your bowels, two or three large bowel movements a day, and on the hydration end, I hope you're drinking pure water about half your body weight in ounces of pure water per day. Usually most people don't need more than 100 ounces because you can overdo and flush your trace minerals. We've done episodes three through six on hydration. The eating window is one less hour than what you're used to is something you could start with. So if you're used to eating from a certain time in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night, that's a 12 hour eating window. And then you're drinking water and maybe herbal teas without any sugar in it the rest of the hours. So when you're having an eating window, if you're eating 12 hours, your body can be working on burning up the calories you ate, burning up the glycogen stores in your muscles and liver that we talked about in episode 28. And then since you're preserving muscle, we can force the body to burn the stored toxin-laden fat. If you're a typical eater, they say that maybe 10 to 12 hours to burn what's in your calorie intake plus your glycogen stores. So a 12-hour eating window doesn't give you a whole lot of time to be burning fat. So what if you shortened it in the beginning to be only an 11-hour eating window? So you gave up that hour of eating in order that it could be resting your digestive system and burning a little more fat. So after three to seven days, follow your instinct. Do what you feel led to do. You could shorten the window another hour. So now you can take it down to a 10-hour eating window, which means now you've given the body 14 hours to burn more fat and rest the digestive and other systems and give more time for repair. You can continue that pattern until you're down to maybe an eight-hour eating window, or some people go to six-hour window, and some people even go to a four-hour window, but not necessarily all the time. So here's an example of an eight-hour window. If you started eating your caloric food, and once you get used to it, because it's kind of like a learned pattern, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., that's an eight hour eating window and you could do water and hot herbal teas with maybe a little bit of super pure stevia in the remaining time frame. So that's really pretty achievable for many people. If you're aggressive and want to try, let me see what it's like to do a six hour window or even a four hour window. And you don't have to do the same thing all the time. But if you are trying for an eight hour window today and you go from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then tomorrow you start eating at a 7 a.m. time, you really haven't given the body that many hours to rest. So some consistency is important in order to achieve that fat burning rest the digestive system timeframe. So start slowly and build up. That's the concept, building your fasting muscle. Some of the possible benefits, if you could teach your body to handle a 24-hour fast, is not only fat burning with ketosis, but also something called autophagy that we talked about in episode 13, and human growth hormone, the youthfulness hormone that could help preserve muscle, and more serious fat loss and lowering of the adrenal cortisol linked to belly fat and inflammation and interfering with your insulin. I know that was a lot of techie talk, but fabulous major benefits of doing a 24-hour fast. And you might want to watch our episode where we talked about one, two, or more meals a day because we talk more in detail about this. But plan a good time when you're ready after you've built up your fasting muscle enough. Say, okay, I'm going to do a 24-hour fast and see how I can handle it. But don't try to put it on all day Wednesday because all day Wednesday can be kind of a daunting effort. But if you put it on, let's say, noon of Wednesday to noon of Thursday, 
you get to eat Wednesday morning and Thursday afternoon. That way it keeps you so that you're eating on both days. So that might be a really good thing to try. So record your results, including how you felt throughout. And the next week, you could try another fast, extending it from 24 hours to 26 hours. If you wish, follow your own instinct, increasing each week to the goal of see if you can get up to five days, which is a prolonged fast. So you can experiment also, if you wish, with the 24-hour fast twice a week. Well, maybe Monday and Thursday during the week, so the weekends are not a part of it. And some people like to play with ADF, alternate day fasting, where you go a day of fasting and then you go a day of not fasting. And you can, again, span this from part of the day. And if you're big into the dinners with family, from dinner one day to dinner the next day still could be a 24-hour fast. So how can I burn more fat? Well, you can narrow the eating window like we talked about and eat less net carbs so the body doesn't have to go into the glycogen stores. You should watch podcast 28 episode that we did last week and that will teach you some things about these glycogen stores and help the body get fat adapted. So healthy, good fats are good for getting the body used to using ketones for fuel, more efficient for the brain and body than sugar, which is really wreaking havoc sometimes if we get carried away with our insulin and insulin sensitivity. So the blood sugar issue can arise with that way. So ketones are a great fuel. So you can eat more healthy fats to get the body used to burning fats for energy and the liver will break down food you ate with healthy fats in it into ketones. Also, there's something called exogenous ketones, and we mentioned that in episode 15, the other tools category. The exogenous ketones are things that you end up actually eating or drinking that can help the body, all natural, provide ketones that the moment they're in your body, they're ready to start functioning as ketones, ready to service the body for energy with the more efficient fuel. So that's a great tool right there. So you might want to check that out and excellent hydration throughout open bowels. And this is important. If you want to be burning more fat, monitor with a body composition scale. And we talked about nothing but the body composition scale in episode 27. Keep your monitoring going. And the previous episode of 28 was how do I know if I'm burning fat? So check that one out as well. So if you're preparing for a possible prolonged fast, you could help your body get adapted with those healthy fats and with the exogenous ketones, excellent hydration in the open bowels, and monitoring with the scale so you know where you're at and where you're going and you're going to be excited when you see things moving in the correct direction. And set the timing for when you want to do a prolonged fast and watch episode 13. Do a shorter one at first and then in a month or two, try for a longer one if you want to. Don't let anybody push this on you. And I will tell you one thing right now, that if you set your mind that I'm going to do a fast for this many days, and you set it to, the first one I did was 18 days. Well, once you wrap your mind around 18 days, once day 18 is complete, you're not mentally ready probably to go a 19th, 20 or go more days. So just set it for a longer time so that up front you're prepared to deal with it. I would love if you would keep me posted on your progress and share any insights or tips that you have with me. And my email is thefastingpodcastwow at gmail.com. Looking forward to hearing from you. That concludes our episode for today. Possible next steps. Watch each and every weekly episode. Refer others. Go back and check out the previous episodes. Check out our website, www.thefastingpodcastwow.com. Check out our WOW program, Wellness and Optimal Weight Drops Under the Tongue with Natural Lifestyle Eating at lifeboatdoctors.com. It's got multiple doctors, 28 minutes. There's a new little 10-minute short version called www.wowdropstechnology.com. Podcasters, we hope that if you like our episodes, you'll give us five stars on iTunes or PodCoin if you use it. And YouTubers, because it's on both medias, we hope that you'll like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember, stay positive, focused, and determined because where the mind goes, energy flows.